Um, so my name is Eric Palmer. Uh, I'm also with the user engagement group, and I'm going to talk about programming environments and compilation on Perlmutter. Let me get it. The four things I'm going to talk about today are, are modules, programming environments, shell scripts, and a little bit about SPAC. Um, so the first thing I'm going to start with is modules. Modules is like your first the first way you're going to be interacting with software installed on Perlmutter. Um, I've got this slide, which is going to tell you sort of most of what you need to know about it, right? So at the very top of this slide, this is sort of like what you see when you log in. This is your prompt. Um, if you were, suppose, you know, you're just checking out the version of Python. Uh, I just type here Python dash dash version. And you see it's Python 2.7. Well, um, for example, Python 3 is already installed on Perlmutter. Um, all we need to do is load the right module that has Python 3, that makes Python 3 available to me. So what we see on my next line here is module list. This shows the modules that were currently loaded. Um, it doesn't include the Python module that contains Python 3. That's why when I typed the Python version, I got 2.7. When I typed module load Python that loaded the, the module of Python that has version 3.9. Um, and you see that when I type the module list. So now when I check the Python version, this mean, makes Python version 3.9 available to me in my user environment. So, so modules are, are the way we sort of manage uh, all the different software packages that are available on Perlmutter. Um, because you know if they were all loaded at the same time, it, it caused all sorts of problems. So this is the way you load one at a time. We have uh, a long list of modules and, and software. Uh, we have uh, chemistry packages. We have material science packages uh, that are available as modules. Um, so this is, you know, if, if, if you need to use one of them, you know, module load. Uh, there, these are the modules that are loaded uh, by default. Um, I'll point out a few of them. Um, the first one here is the Cray P x86 Milan. This sort of defines the CPU architecture. So we'll talk more about compiling later, but um, this allows uh, the Cray wrappers to really uh, focus the compilation code on the, the CPU architecture and get more speed out of it that way. Um, there's two other modules I want to point out here. Uh, this is the program environment. Uh, GNU and the GCC compiler. These are the default programming environment and compiler uh, that you see when you log in. And then there's some other settings here. The ones in green uh, relate to GPUs. So this gives you gives the the Cray programming it gives um, the details of the architecture of the GPUs. So if you're compiling for GPUs, uh, the Cray compiler wrappers will use uh, the details in this module to optimize for that. And um, another one to point out here that's loaded by default is this GPU module, which will also load the GPU toolkit for you. And uh, by def in this one, we'll set uh, QDA aware MPI, which we'll talk a little bit more about later. Um, on this slide, I have sort of your most common commands that you'll use when you're using modules. Um, the thing to point out is, because a lot of people I think are coming from Core and looking at Perlmutter, is we're using a slightly different module system now. It's LMOD. And so some of these commands might behave a little bit differently, and some of them are, are, are um, just different. <laughs> so module list, that shows you all the modules that are currently loaded in your user environment, um, like you saw on the previous slide. Uh, where you load and unload those is, as before, with module load and unload. Uh, module swap will still work if you want to do that all in one step. Take one out and put one back in. Um, that's, that covers kind of most of what you'll end up doing. When you want to start seeing more details about what's going on, module show will show you how each module is uh, changing your user environment, which can be really helpful for sort of understanding what's going on uh, when you load and unload modules. And module spider is kind of the new way to find the module you want, um, or a software package that you're looking for in Perlmutter. So uh, I'll, I'll give you a specific example about that in the next slide. Um, I want to point out some kind of neat tricks that you might find useful. 
Um, if you want to pipe output from module, it's helpful to use the redirect flag. Um, and in this sort of line, what I'm doing is I'm piping the output from module, but the, the, the command I'm running is spider, but the dash R flag tells it to look for regular expressions. So I'm basically outputting every possible package and I'm grepping through that for, the, for a particular string because I might be looking for a particular thing and this could help me find it. Um, this ML is a shortcut for module list and the dash T will put it down in a list. So earlier, Shazeb mentioned, uh, like when you file a ticket, sometimes it can be helpful to show which modules you have loaded. Um, ML dash T puts that in a nice vertical list to just copy and paste. Uh, module reset will bring you back to the default set of modules that you get when you log on, um, but that one uh, should be available after the next Perlmutter maintenance. So uh, in this next slide, we, I'm going to show you why we no longer recommend you doing module avail uh, and, and recommend that you use module spider instead. And um, essentially what this comes down to is not, you may not see every single package when you type module avail, avail because you know, LMOD has this hierarchical uh, module system. So in this example, what we're going to do is we're going to try to module load cray uh, dash net CDF. Um, and what you'll see is it's not loaded here, um, but when we take module, oh, I'll let it go. Uh, we can't just, we, we weren't able to pull it up just like this and it doesn't show up in module show either. So even, so when I type module avail, I get all the packages, um, but we see like the net CDF ones, those ones aren't the ones that want. So I'm not even able to, to see this with module available. However, if I use module spider um, for the package I want, it shows up. So here to get more information about the package, I give it the package and the version number, the same command module spider. And now it tells me, oh, to get the one I want, I actually have to load cray-hdf5 first. So that's what we do here. And now we see that we can load the package we want. So this is why we're recommending you use module spider now in Perlman. This is a little bit of an example of like what's going on behind the scenes when you do a module load. So this is what the command module show does for you. It tells you what are those commands uh, that are being run that's essentially changing your user environment to make the, the software available, the software that you want available to you in your environment. So I, I've just sort of roughly split this up into like three separate pieces. Um, you know, the pieces in, uh, highlighted in red are sort of extra information about names and, and info. Um, but the ones in yellow are changes to your path. You know, so the way Linux works is when it looks to run a software or an executable, it's looking for it in your path. So by changing, uh, or adding file locations to your path, it makes more executable files available to you uh, so that you can run them on Perlmutter. Um, obviously, there's, there's more than one path here because the environment, the, the user environment in Perlmutter is uh, complicated. The other things that a module show command will do is it'll make, it'll set other environmental variables, like for example, this HDF5 DIR. Uh, that's important for when you are like compiling a code that depends on HDF5. So that other code, um, sorry, that other code. If you're if you're building a system and you say like, okay, I have HDF5 and it's going to look for that find my environmental variable HDF5 dir to know how to link it back to the other one. So um, all of this kind of happens behind the scenes when you type module load and module unload, um, and module show. Um, give, makes all those details apparent in case you need to go in and figure out exactly what's happening. Um, but in general, module load and unload it will do what you want most of the time. So now that we have an sense about modules, uh, probably the most important thing you'll want to use them for is configuring the programming environment. So uh, we have, I wouldn't say, we have more than three, but I'm going to focus on three main uh, programming environments on Perlmutter. Um, that's essentially the, 
the GNU programming environment, that's the default, the uh, NVIDIA programming environment, which is essentially what I would recommend you, you work on if you want to compile for GPUs, and uh, the Cray programming environment, which, you know, if you want to sort of uh, squeeze out the maximum performance of the system, um, this one uh, might be something you would try. Uh, what you see in this chart is the compiler used in each programming environment, right? For C++, it's G++, for C, it's C++, C++ G, uh, for Fortran, G Fortran, and, and so on, right? What we're going to talk about, and I'll focus a little bit more on, is Cray provides wrappers for these compilers so that when you're in the program environment GNU, instead of saying G++, you can type CC, and the system will automatically know, because I have this programming environment loaded, that I want to use the G++ compiler. Um, and it will do actually a lot more for you. So um, these sort of programming environments work in conjunction with these wrappers to do a lot of optimizations in the compile step. One other thing I, I want to point out is that uh, MPI is, you know, is, is kind of taken care of uh, automatically under the covers when you're using these wrappers, and it's this create and pitch that that it goes along with each one of these programming environments. Um, let me see if there are any specific questions because this is if there's all right. Uh, if you want to learn sort of more information about each one of these programming environments, uh, module show will kind of give you a head start on, on what it's doing. Um, if you look in a little bit deeper, you want to do module show and beta here and, and module show CCE, and that will tell you exactly what uh, compilers and, and libraries are being loaded by each one of these program environments. Okay. So uh, I said I would talk about the compiler wrappers and sort of what's going on um, behind the scenes when you're using them. Um, so this is what this slide is, is trying to show. Uh, what I have here is one line where I compiled sort of just my basic C code um, with GCC. And instead of doing GCC, I'm, a, I'm in the GNU programming environment, and I'm using the CC Craig compiler wrapper instead. And what I've done here is I've added the Cray PE verbose command, which will show kind of like all the extra commands that are being hidden behind this uh, wrapper here when I, when I run this compile line. So essentially what this is saying is that cc hello world.c, et cetera, is the same as typing gcc, you know, dash m arch equals the version and, and so on 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 and so on. Uh, whereas, if you just type GCC, you're going to lose all these sort of optimizations and automatic links and so, and so on. Um, some other things to point out uh, that are being happening when you use the CC wrapper is it's automatically including um, MPI through MPitch here. Um, and it's also the MPI that's compiled with the compiler in that programming environment, such as GNU. Same thing for the science libraries. Um, which I'll mention in another for another slide, um, that's automatically all being taken care of inside this CCC wrapper. So we really recommend uh, that when you're compiling your code on Perlmutter that you, you give the wrappers um, a shot. Um, in the next slide, you have the whole complete list of the output of this like sort of a simple example. You can see we've got, it's linking, uh, you've got the automatically uh, You've got the link fl linker flags up here. You've got the paths to the libraries automatically included, and you know a ton of things essentially. Um, some of which will um, allow your code to be further optimized by the compiler, so it will run faster. Hmm. Okay. Again, just to sort of belabor the point of all the stuff that's done automatically by the wrapper. Uh, if you're using the Cray compiler wrappers, you know, it's going to include the, the MPI, the scientific packages like LUPAC, BLAST, ScalaPack, and more, they're all gonna be uh, included automatically. You don't even have to, you know, include the, the dash L lines, the linker lines. 
Um, if you have loaded specific modules such as HDF5 or FFTW, those will also be automatically included if you're, you're using the, the Cray compiler wrappers. Um, so they're really there to, to facilitate a lot of uh, use and, and make things easier for you as a user. Um, if you're looking for more information about the, uh, well, if you're looking for specific information about these packages, LaPak, ScalaPak, Blast, and so on, uh, they're all, it might be difficult to find them because they're all included in the Cray-LibSci uh, module. Um, so if you want to know more information about them, uh, the man page to, to read all about that and the way that's packaged in the Cray, uh, on a Cray system is, is here. Uh, what I want you to know from this slide is that CUDA aware MPI is enabled by default. Uh, before I, but before I keep moving, I should tell you what that is. So, um, so what is CUDA aware MPI? Well, MPI is, you know, we're, we're familiar with MPI from Corey, right? This is a way for um, processes to talk to each other, CPUs to exchange information between each other to do uh, large computations and distribute that work among each other. Uh, but that's kind of from before GPU times. So the next step to sort of when you now when you have a GPU attached to this, right? Like you could have MPI, but it's still talking from CPU to CPU. And then, you know, if it needs to add a GPU on the end, it has to go GPU to CPU. Then I send my MPI message to the other CPU to another GPU, right? And so with CUDA where MPI, you don't, you no longer have to go through the CPU. The GPUs can actually directly pass those messages to each other. So it, it makes uh, certain workflows or certain um, codes, you know, you might get a large speed up uh, from the way that those messages are being passed from device to, to device, you know. Um, so how do you enable CUDA aware MPI? Uh, you load the GPU module inside. If I do module show on GPU, it shows that it's turning this environmental flag on, this in pitch GPU support enabled. If you want to turn it off, you can do module load CPU. And if you did module show CPU, it would show you that it would set this environment and pitch GPU support enabled to zero. So um, that's what's going on behind the scenes with that flag. Furthermore, uh, about compiling, um, you know, so if you're dealing with a, a a make system such as CMake, or you're doing the, the normal sort of configure, uh, make, make install, you may have to make some adjustments to use the compiler flags. Uh, this is the line I have here. So one way to do this is to set this, is essentially setting this environment, uh, the CC environment variable to the CC that's provided by the Cray programming environment and, and so on. Um, or if you're doing this with a configure step, it, it would look like this. Um, I am totally blanking on time and how I'm doing. Sorry, Helen. 10 more minutes, okay. 10 more minutes. Um, so modules link dynamically by default on uh, Perlmutter. So that's to say, if you are compiling things with uh, the wrappers, it will try to put the path in with this WL-R path library path. And what that essentially means is when you're using it, then I don't have to specify the location. Uh, one thing to point out is the difference from Cori is that this dash static or using the Cray P link type equals static uh, is, can fail on Perlmutter and it's not supported because of that. Um, other good to know compiler settings. Uh, the only one I really want to point out here is that OpenMP is not enabled by default. Um, again, I believe this is a difference from Cori, uh, but if you want OpenMP to, to run, you, you need to add the flags. And the flag uh, differs depending on which compiler and uh, you know, which uh, programming environment you're, you're using. Uh, for more information on compilers, I think the source of truth is the man pages. So I get leave those commands here for you to find out if you if you want to deep dive and find out what a specific option does or what you need. Uh, this is where I would go to to read about them. Uh, 
uh, in the next few slides, I have a few examples with this just, uh, so it's kind of like a hello world code, uh, which basically says hello from each um, thread. Um, and I'm gonna show you sort of how to compile these things and to make them work on Perl Matter. So the first example is just the code with MPI and OpenMP enabled. And it's, I mean, it's the same code, sorry, but I'm compiling it with OpenMP and MPI. So down here, this is the compile line I'm gonna use. Um, kind of let the example sort of explain here. So what I'm showing is that's the, the code that I have from that previous example. These are the modules I have loaded. Um, in this example, I'm, I'm running only on the CPU. So I'm only compiling my code to have it run on the CPU. Um, so you know, that's why we're focused on using just open MP threads. So these are all the environmental variables to specify. Then I run my code and I get my output. Um, the only thing, the other thing I wanna say about this is if you're coming from Cori, especially like uh, where you have code that only runs on CPUs and it's multi-threaded to take advantage of OpenMP, open MP, this is like the example that you would use to focus on so that when you switch to Perlmutter, this is how you would compile your code to run only on CPUs once again. Um, in the next example, uh, this does sort of one step more, right? It takes that same code, and then instead of running the multi-threaded application on the CPU, it offloads that work to run multi-threaded on the GPU. Um, the only difference in this setup here is, I'll, I'll walk through it as this goes. So I've got the same code, I'm listing the modules. What I wanna point out here is I have the NVIDIA programming environment loaded, and I have the GPU module loaded. And so with those modules, I can let the Cray wrappers kind of take care of everything else. I use this line, dash MP equals GPU. That tells it to do the open MP threads on the GPU. The MFO command, that's what which you see up there from after the main. It shows you what part of the code it changed to change the GPU code to run on the GPU. And you see the same result. Um, if you're running with Ace, uh, open ACC, um, it's you know a very similar uh, you know you're going to see a very similar set of code or uh, you know prompt output. So I just left the compile line there for you so you can know how to do it yourself. Um, this is an example where I'm compiling code with CUDA aware uh, MPI. So what we have here is, is you know similar things to point out um, because I'm compiling code for the GPU. I want to be in the programming environment, the NVIDIA programming environment. I want to have the uh, GPU module loaded. Um, and this is just to reiterate what we covered earlier is that the MPitch GPU support enabled flag is what allows, which turns the CUDA aware um, MPI on and off. Right. Um, I talk faster than I type. Okay. Um, so here at the compile line, uh, I need to include the hardware HW location, HW LOC. Um, I need to include the dash L HW LOC so it knows where to look for all of the GPUs when it runs this code. But, but essentially what you're seeing is with the Cray compiler wrappers, um, the, the command to compile these codes is, is fairly straightforward. Um, in this example, it's sometimes you have a software package and you have to sort of manually install it and, and specify the location of you know, the library and specify the location it includes. So this example uh, just shows you how you can do that uh, as well. Um, I'll let it. I'll let it run. So in this example, essentially we have a code that depends on the hyper package, and I installed this. Uh, for this example, I've already installed it manually in a different location. So 
So I'm saving that location as an environmental environment variable so I don't have to type it all out every time. And this is how you can access that location as an environment, environmental variable. So now here's the compile line. And this is where I'm manually specifying the location of the files I need. And then if we let this go, you'll, you'll see that it turns out it worked. And so. Okay, so I hope those examples are helpful, um, but obviously compiling can be much more complex depending on your exact specific use case. So I leave these additional resources with you. Uh, the other thing to mention is the LLVM programming environment is also available on Perlmutter. At this point, it's still experimental. So if you want to load it, you have to do this first step is you have to do this module use to this location, then module load MPE, and then you can get into this LLVM programming environment. So the next thing I want to talk about quickly is uh, shell scripts. Um, so why do we want a shell script? Well, suppose every time you log on, you type the same four lines to get into, you know, you want your Python, you want to go to the create program environment, and you want to set some specific environmental variables. Well, if you're tired of typing out of that every single time, what would you do, right? Well, you could take it and put it into a script. Um, where would you put this script? Well, all the consultants um, are probably going to overwhelmingly recommend that you put it in its own separate file. So for example, uh, con config my environment.sh, and that every time you want to run these commands, you can just source this file. We definitely recommend this over putting in places like bash RC or bash profile or someplace like that, just because having it automatically loaded can sort of lead to unexpected results and it's easy to forget you put it there and you know it can save you a lot of headache by just typing dot in your shell script file uh, instead. So the only the, in the last section here I want to talk a little bit about SPAC. SPAC is sort of another source of software uh, available on Perlmutter. You can see there's a um, kind of two SPAC Locations. One is the E4S software stack that has 319 packages, SPAC packages. The other one is the uh, sort of vanilla SPAC, which has 130 SPAC packages. Um, there's quite a bit of software here that's already been pre installed that you can use SPAC to, to load into your environment. Or if you want something that has a SPAC package that's not here, you can use it, you can install it uh, yourself. So that's where you get these two columns. On the left, this is how you you know, load a package that is already pre-installed. On the right is if you found one of these packages, um, you found the package you don't, the package you want isn't actually already installed, but it does, there's a SPAC package available for it. You would follow down this column. Uh, this example shows you how to use a SPAC installed uh, package as a dependency to compile something. and and this is going to be my last slide, but my key suggestions to remember from today are module spider is what you want to use from now on. Uh, the compiler, the create compiler wrappers, uh, capital CC, CC, and, and FTM for Fortran are going to add a lot of convenience and do a lot of optimizations for you. Uh, there's even more software available through the SPAC and E4S modules. And if you want to modify your environment on a regular basis, please write a, a script that you can source each time. So with that, I will end. Thank you for your attention.